To manually enter a bill of lading, click the new button. You will enter the date and time of the pickup according to what's on the bill of lading. Enter the BOL number. This field is alphanumeric. Any input field that has the binoculars icon above it is a searchable field. You can click on the binoculars to bring up a search window or you can just press the F2 key. You can choose the correct pickup point using a drop down list. In our demo we only have one rack set up for this vendor. The choice of the rack determines the unit cost and the taxes we will pay on the purchase. There are hauler, truck, and trailer defaults set up for your company during file building. Each field has a drop down list of other available choices. Performance reports for company drivers and vehicles are populated through bill of lading entry, so it's important to get the right hauler or common carrier inputs here. All of Commander's input programs are designed to allow the user to use keyboard strokes rather than mouse clicks to move through data entry. This lets users enter transactions more efficiently. You can use either the tab key or the enter key to advance from one field to the next. The correct unit cost is read into the program from Commander's vendor price file. Once you tell Commander the date and the time of the pickup, the vendor, the pickup point, and the product, it will go get the correct price. However, this cost can be overridden in the instance where you want to pass a rack discount onto a customer. Changing this value will create an entry in the event log, which is an exception report for management. If a carrier has charged you a surcharge fee, such as for wait time or split load, you would enter that amount here. Now we can enter the drop information. Now if you don't remember the customer ID, press F2 for a customer list. You can have as many customer ship to addresses as you need. If the ship to is in a state, county, etc. that's different than the customer's main address, Commander handles the taxes automatically. Ship to also controls customer pricing and freight table selection. The system automatically assigns these numbers. This will become the customer invoice number. Therefore, at this point, this bill of lading is tied to particular customer invoices for auditing purposes. Customer 2200 is a wholesale customer. We don't really know or care how he has his tanks numbered according to the products within the tanks. So what does this number here mean? Commander is updating what is called the in-transit bulk plant, which is a convention within Commander that will allow you to track in great detail just the rack direct portion of your business. A big benefit of this is that you can pull P&Ls on just your Rack Direct business anytime you want to. We are dropping 4,000 gallons to customer 2200. The bill of lading program reads in the markup that we have set for that product for this customer ship to, which is 3 cents above Rack. Since not all product has been dispersed, the program automatically goes back to prompt you for another drop entry. You cannot complete the entry of a bill of lading until all gallons have been disposed of. Instead of dropping the rest at a wholesale account, we are going to put it into our bulk plant. Of course, an invoice will not be produced for this drop, but the on-hand quantity and a recalculated weighted average unit cost will be calculated as soon as this BOL is posted. In this instance, the tank number is in fact our bulk plant tank number one, which holds 87 octane. The quantity here defaults to the remainder of the load. 3.70925 unit cost will now blend in with the former weighted average unit cost to give us a new weighted average cost. We save the entries and mark this one ready to post. We've jumped over to the customer invoicing program to see that invoice number 228 is there waiting to be finalized. If we don't need to edit anything on the invoice or add any product or fee to it, we can print it immediately. And this is the resulting customer invoice. It only takes a couple of minutes to manually enter a BOL for a wholesale drop and produce a customer invoice that is correctly priced and taxed. It takes even less time if you use electronic bill of lading import. There is a separate episode for that.